This is my Tidal Wave project. My name is Carlos Martinez. I'm currently taking Math 2412 for pre-calculus in the spring 2023 sem semester. Now, for a brief introduction. This is a Tidal Waves project in which the waves of a specific location will be analyzed and the graph conveying the waves will be determined. The region that I have chosen is the U.S. Upper East Coast and the location that I have chosen is Winter Harbor, Maine. The dates I chose to examine was April 10th, 2020 through April 13th, 2020. Now, I chose this location because my uncle once owned a property near this location, and he would always use this as a vacation spot for us during the winter season or the summer. Now, I chose to start on the day April 10th because that is my uncle's birthday. So it only seemed fitting. Now some background on Winter Harbor, Maine. Winter Harbor is a small city in Maine which few attractions that are still worth the visit. The most popular location to visit is the Scudic Peninsula. Winter Harbor typically receives about 300,000 tourists a year and it is primarily a fishing town. Now, how is the tide consistency in Winter Harbor, Maine? While the tides in Winter Harbor, Maine remain consistent year-round, Winter Harbor does not have any extreme weather, so tide sizes don't really deviate from the mean. Here are, is a picture of the dates chosen and the, the high and low tides, and how high they were, how low they were at specific times during the time period of 10 of April 2020 to 13th of April 2020. Now, we must determine a sinusoid equation in order to graph our data. First, first step is to find the vertical shift. And what we have to do to find the vertical shift is to find the average of the high tides, and then we have to find the average of the low tides. Afterwards, we find the average of the averages, which would be the high tides plus the low tides averages, divided by 2, because we're trying to find the mean, and that will give us our d as a part of our equation of 5.48. Now we find the amplitude as a second step, which is a distance between your average high tide and your average low tide. In order to do this, we get the average high tide and we try to find the difference between it with the average of the averages. So that gives us 6.52. 6.522. Now, we know that since our data starts with a high tide. And the next thing I have to do is find the B. And the B, since we're using a lunar day as a period, then 12 hours and 24 minutes, the period B will have to equal 12.4, and then the value of B, which equals, which should be 2 pi over 12.4. So now, since we can translate 2 pi over 12.4 to 5 pi over 31. So our B would be 5 pi over 31. Next, we find in the step, we have to find the C over B. So now, the decimal time for our first tide is 0 0.77, which would be our C over B. So now, when we put it all together, we can form the equation Y equals 6.522 cosine of 5 pi over 31 times X parentheses minus 0 0.77 close parentheses and close the parentheses from the cosine equation, plus 5.48. Now, here's a list of our original plus our sinusoid data. As you can see, we have the dates, then what type of tide they are, at what time they occurred in the 64, in the 72 hour window. And specifically at what times, we get to see the, the raw data as in the time, the raw data as in the height, and the max sinusoid times and max for the x values and for the y values. Here is our raw data plus our sinusoid graph being shown. The raw data is in blue and the sinusoid data is in red. The sinusoid data follows the equation, meaning that the it tends to show the sort of line of best fit for the raw data. 
but then you can see that the right data isn't exact doesn't have the exact same maximums and minimums. They all have they vary because it's raw data instead of an equation. Now, tendencies in high and low tides. The time between high and low tides was about 12.4, and the max high per tide for the high and low tides in the raw data appeared very similar. Was there a predictable pattern? There was, and because the high and lows of the tides remain relatively close, so not much chance for an outlier. What about the influence of the moon? There was influence of the moon because of the gravitational pull that the moon may have on tidal waves. So it must be certain that moon does have an influence. What about predicted heights on given days? The height of the tidal wave at 11 a.m. on the sixth day will be equal to negative 1.041. It will be a low tide. This will happen on the day April 16th, 2020. If I plug 131 into the x of my cosine equation, we will use 131 because on the sixth day at 11 a.m. the time will become 131. We get y equals 6.522 cosine of 5 pi over 31 times 131 minus 0 0.77 close parentheses plus 5.48, which should equal to negative 1.041. What about the height of the tidal wave at 6 a.m. on July 4th, 2022? It will be equal to 9.393. It will be approaching a high tide. This will happen on July 4th, 2022. If I plug 821 into the x of my cosine equation, we will use 821 because on July 4th, 2022, at 6 a.m., the time will become 821. We get y equals 6.522 cosine of 5 pi over 31, 821 minus 0 0.77, close parentheses, plus 5.48, we should equal to 9.393. Is there a predictable natural phenomenon? Another natural phenomenon that can be explained by the periodic sine or cosine wave is daily temperature. Here's an additional model in which we use temperature. Average monthly temperature, y in degrees Fahrenheit for Ginu, Alaska, y equals 16 uh, pi over 6 x minus 2 pi over 3 plus 40, where x is the month of the year. The highest average monthly temperature is 5.56 degrees, and it happens in July. The lowest average monthly temperature is 24 degrees, and it happens in January. The predicted temperature in August is 54 degrees. My initial reaction was surprised because I did not understand how someone could begin to solve this problem. As I uploaded my equation to calculator and then constructed a value chart from my data, my plan was effective. I did not need to rework it. Mistyping the equation into the calculator or not properly constructing a value chart can happen due to not reviewing the work. I would make sure my inputs were proper before proceeding. Here I display two graphs of the chart, two charts of the equation, which demonstrate the, the bottom chart displays the sinusoid equation and the top chart displays the exact values seen in the list that's right below the top chart, which is the x values, 1 through 12, and the y values, and how they match. Thank you for your time.